reportedly told a young Netanyahu that he would one day become Prime Minister of Israel and would be the nation's last leader before handing the scepter to the Messiah. The former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert has heavily criticized Netanyahu. He's the worst person to have to uh, deal with it. This is a fall from grace for a man who was reportedly told by one of the most powerful Jewish religious figures in the world that he would be the one to welcome the Messiah. Forty years ago, when Netanyahu was Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, he met Menachem Mendel Schneerzen, the leader of the Chabad Lubavitch movement, known simply as the Rebbe. He said, uh, you know, you're going to this house of darkness, the UN, which was uh, very, very unfriendly to Israel at the time. He called it the house of darkness. Uh, and he said, even in the uh, greatest uh, darkness, if you light a candle, it spreads uh, a great light that can be seen from afar. The Rebbe reportedly believed Netanyahu had a mission from God to prepare Israel for the coming of the Messiah, or in Hebrew, the Moshiach. Over the next decade, the two men developed a close relationship. Soon after entering Israel's parliament for the first time, Netanyahu paid his respects to his mentor. Back then, Netanyahu was probably the only ally that he could work with. Uh, in Israeli politics. He obviously demands from Netanyahu to take some steps to hasten the coming of Messiah, which is to make Israel a more religious place uh, and to take certain concrete steps uh, in this regard. And Netanyahu says, I def I'm definitely doing that. <laughs> The Rebbe never visited Israel, not once, and yet from his home in Brooklyn, he was able to influence Israeli politics. His influence was recognized by American politicians too. US presidents paid homage to him, establishing and proclaiming a National Education and Sharing Day in honor of his birthday. And please give my warmest regards to the Rebbe on this his 86th birthday. For over 40 years, the charismatic Rebbe led the movement. His $1 donations, including to Netanyahu, came with a blessing to his followers and a reminder to give to those less fortunate. A couple of years after this meeting, the Rebbe reportedly told a young Netanyahu that he would one day become Prime Minister of Israel and would be the nation's last leader before handing the scepter to the Messiah. And today, his relationship with President Joe Biden may not be perfect, but that confidence, at least outwardly, is still there. Today, Netanyahu compares his war with Hamas to Israel's battle with the Amalek in the Old Testament. You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible, and we do remember and we are fighting. The Amalek was one of Israel's arch enemies, and in some parts of the Old Testament, God commanded they should be destroyed. 
Some commentators believe this is what Netanyahu is signalling with his biblical references. Amalek is a sign of people what are was evil people and they try to take away Jewish people from God, to divine them for God and to take them away from God. He's doing the same thing what Amalek has done. He's doing what Amalek has done. So how he coming to speak in the name of the Torah, in the name of the Jewish religion, when he don't believe in the Torah, he don't believe in God. Benjamin Netanyahu is known to be a secular Jew, but he certainly saw the value in being associated with the Rebbe, whose presence is still felt in Israel even 30 years after his death. Sitting alongside his Zionist and ultra-Orthodox allies, Netanyahu may or may not believe in God, but he certainly believes in retribution, visiting violence of biblical proportions upon the people of Gaza.